I'm Kate Hahn with TV Insider, and we're speaking with the creators and cast of Pistol. That's my guitar! You're stuck on, you should be worried about, not your banjo! Ladies, please. That was great. What's wrong with you? I like it when people fight back instead of ignoring you. Lewis Partridge and Emma Appleton, you play Sid Vicious and Nancy Spungen, who are maybe the most tragic rock and roll couple ever. Uh, look at you two, you look so wholesome right now. Um, <laughs> what, I mean, Lewis, what, what attracted Sid to Nancy? Oh, oh, good question. Ooh. Good question. I think her, I think her spirit, her openness, there's a great, there's a great scene where she just sort of comes up to him, the first ever scene. Yeah. She's like completely guard down, just completely herself, almost throws, throws her attention onto Sid. And I don't think that's something that Sid had ever had before. So that was quite, I think, um, quite enticing to him. Um, and she had that same sort of all or nothing, hell for leather attitude. So they sort of, they were very similar in that way and sort of egged each other on. Yeah. Um, I think they recognized something. Yeah in each other, well, yeah. that's how we yeah. play it anyway. Well, Emma, so what did Nancy recognize in herself and Sid? Why was she drawn to him? If she came after him, There's a, she's I, all dressed up and goes to the show and just like looks at him up on stage. Yeah, she she knows the Sex Pistols are playing there, she wants to see them, and I think I definitely played it like she had an agenda, but then she sees Sid, and I think she just sees this like, I think she sees him for like a, a young, boy kind of right. in a way but like trapped in like a rock star's body <laughs> and I think that's so in, yeah enticing is the right word mm. to her um, and they have a quite a quick connection very early on and I think it is just a bond that yeah. is solidified mm. and then they're just away they're off in their own world yeah right? Right, it's a it's a fale adieu, right? They they make each other completely crazy. Yeah, yeah. They don't bring out the best. I in think each. they complete each other and destroy each other at the same time. Nice. So it's yes. this vicious so that's, circle they can't get out of. That's a great way to put it, yeah. um, Lewis. How much did you know about the Sex Pistols going into this, and how did you perfect that perfect sneer? Uh, um, I knew almost nothing about the Sex Pistols, so it really was entering like a world of just information that I needed to absorb, um, but all fascinating information. And I did feel a bit guilty because I know a load of people would kill to be in the room with Paul Cook, Glenn Matlock, Steve Jones, and there was me knowing almost nothing about them, just sitting across from them. But I do now, and I'm so appreciative for that, and I really do care about them, um, and love learning about them. As for the snarl, I can only do it on one side, so thank God it's Sid's side. <laughs> like, I think I used to do that thing as a, as a, as oh. a kid, you know? <laughs> Where you pretend you've got a little, yeah, 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 and you yeah. can go... That one as well. Um, so, You've been preparing for this role yeah, since you were a child. Before I even, yeah, <laughs> exactly. Macy Williams, you play Jordan, who is works in Vivian Westwood's uh, shop called Sex, and she has a very distinct way of dressing. What does that say about her and the way young people were feeling at the time? Written. Um, I think that she really was using her body as a canvas and would express herself through the way that she dressed and the way that she you know, did her hair and makeup. And I think that um, a lot of the materials and the um, outfits that she would, she would wear just caused quite a stir. Um, but I think, uh, I think that she, it always kind of came from a place um, of... Uh, like t t like turning the male gaze in on itself, um, and it was like confrontational in the way that she dressed. So, despite it being, um, you know, probably like one of the more uh, revealing like roles that I've played and like outfits that I that I wore, um, it actually felt kind of nice to also come off as like more intimidating. And so I think with Jordan, it was like it was a power move really, mm. um, and she wasn't like a a victim to her dress. She was like. Um, yeah, she was like the owner of it, which is exciting. And is this Vivian Westwood that you're wearing today? It's not. It's, jo it's Jean-Paul Gaultier, but um, they are not my 
actual BBs. <laughs> <laughs> it's very Vivian inspired. It though, is. Isn't it? it yeah, is. I'm, I'm going to claim that for Vivian. <laughs> <laughs> Tallulah, you play. You, you play Vivian. <laughs> You play Vivian. Tell us about why she opened this shop and why she wanted to create this kind of edgy clothing. Well, I mean, it's hard, obviously, don't want to speak for the real Vivian Westwood, but as scripted, I think she and Malcolm um, were on, on this mission to kind of shake up the UK. And, um, and it's funny because uh, Malcolm's character has, you know, all these sort of crazy out there ideas and is, is, is quite Machiavellian. Um, but Vivian's the one at home, you know, making things work. Um, she, she's the one that's, you know, making all, all the uh, all the outfits and the the punk slogans, etc. So it was it was fun to play her as the kind of counterpart to to all the craziness the boys were doing. Mm. Sydney, you play Chrissy Hind, and we you know, it's great to see her. You know, at the very beginning of her career, she's this American in London. She's soaking it all up. Uh, tell us about this stage in Chrissy Hind's life before she became extremely famous with The Pretenders. She's, um, I had the, the gift of being able to meet with her, and um, she was so generous sharing her stories and her memories um, and her bravery and resilience um, in popping over to London and trying to make something work um, at that time and at that stage of her life um, is so brave. Um, I really, really admire her and look up to the way that she she knew what she wanted to do and she was going to find a way to do it. Um, and she was playing the long game mm. and she still is today. <laughs> you know, she is still performing. Mm. Um, so it, it worked out. It was, it was really inspiring playing her. So um, Anson Boone, you, you play the this powerful lead singer for the Sex Pistols, you almost seem possessed by him on screen. Tell us about getting into that role. Well, it's funny you should say possessed because I think I became obsessed with him because I um I didn't know too much about the Sex Pistols before we started. But then when I learned about them and how they didn't go to music school, I didn't go to drama school either, so I've kind of learned anything I know um, on the job. And that's also what they did. And they, they learned and got better gig by gig. And I just became so enamored by that and the, the fact that they wrote these incredible songs when they were 18 years old. I think it's, and they were so unique at the time. So I became such a fan and I really just wanted to um, put everything I admire about my character into my performance. So it's funny you should think I was possessed because I definitely was obsessed. Well, it definitely seems like that. Jacob Slater, you play you play Paul Cook, who was, you know, we see him in the very beginning of the series and he he's the drummer and he rep really represents this Britain that, you know, formed the Sex Pistols. Tell us about him and, and the world that he lived in and, and how that created punk. Well, uh, I mean, him and him and Steve, that that friendship is kind of the original seed of the whole thing and just their sort of genuine shared love for music and drive and ambition to actually do it, you know, to actually get out there because there's lots of kids that kind of talk about it and there's, there's a few that actually do it. And that spirit, I think, was, was contagious. And when John joined and they kind of managed to work out some of their differences, you know, John had that drive too in a kind of different way. So they were all kind of, it's funny you said possessed earlier, they, they, they did have this ambition not to be famous in the sort of normal sense, but, but to get their, their message across. And Paul was a massive part of that, you know, and he was kind of the rock, not just as a drummer, but as a person. And I think that's because of, of his like, background. He was quite a kind of family-oriented family oriented guy. And um, yeah, I think they definitely needed him in the band as the sort of solid thing, especially for, for Steve, who had quite a you know, hectic kind of up upbringing and stuff. He, he needed to be there for Steve for him to come back to. Thomas, you play Malcolm McLaren, who was considered in some ways the creator of the Sex Pistols. Talk about him and his relationship with the band. Um, well, I mean, Malcolm, yeah, he, he was really the creator of the Pistols. He saw these individuals that would wander into his shop and um, pick them out and um, decided to give them a voice just uh, fell in love with their with their energy and their unapologetic sense of self, um, and and saw them as kind of like lost boys. He was kind of like a Fagin character almost, um, and I think he wanted to use them to to kind of to kind of wake up the world and and um, and to, to kind of 
scream and shout and to um, um, yeah to, to to give to give them a, a platform and a, and a voice to feel that they have importance and a place in the world. Well, Craig Pierce, this this band did not last a long time, but a lot went on in the time that we were, they were together. How did you approach writing scenes? What was really important for you to get onto screen? Well, what was really important was to capture the essence of this of this chaotic time and this chaotic movement. Uh, how how do you how do you do that in a script? Well, really, you've got to go back to to the characters. And you know what originally attracted me to the to the project was reading the book um, "Lonely Boy" by Steve Jones, who was the lead guitarist of the Sex Pistols. And you know, it was really important to get beyond the the I guess the kind of cliched image of these you know spitting dirty kind of caricatures that 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 you know punk has become in many many ways and to show them as real people who were trying to say something pistol premieres may 31st on hulu for more insider videos like this click subscribe